Hi there, today I would like to present to you my brand new Filmic Tone Curve version 2 DCTL. This is built from the ground up and hopefully a massive improvement over version 1. This is also completely transfer curve aware in support of transfer curves. And I would say let's dive straight into it and look how this tool works. So this tool is really meant to live at the end of your node graph right before your output transform, which for me today is the 2499. And it's really probably the most essential ingredient in any look. And let's just start with the contrast slider that does exactly what you would expect it to do. It will dial in contrast into your image and it will do so in a very filmic and cinematic way. As you can see, we can go quite far. And today I think I want to go with something like 1.3. That is usually plenty. I very rarely go beyond that, certainly to would be a, an unusual choice for something bold. But in this case, I think I'm going to stick with about 1.3. And obviously this is not just supposed to look good on one shot, but on all kinds of shots. So we're going to have a look at this shot and here as well. I love the way this renders faces. There's a lot of contrast here in the faces, but then the roll off and the highlights and the shadows is soft enough that we don't feel like we lose any dynamic range. So the next slider is a pivot slider, and I would say most of the time you don't want to actually touch this because this tool really is supposed to protect your middle gray from shifting around. And if you shift around the pivot, obviously you shift around middle gray and then it'll look that is probably not what you want to do. But if you want to, the pivot can be shifted one stop down or one stop up. So this is in stops relative to middle gray. So there, obviously, you're biasing your exposure up and down if you use this pivot. So black and white are probably very self-explanatory, so I'm not going to spend too much time on them. What is probably most interesting for these images are the toe controls, because we've got quite dark images. And in this case, if we play with this toe strength slider, I hope you can see this over YouTube but this kind of controls how much we can see into the shadow. If I turn on the curve overlay, it's probably a little bit easier to see. So this really determines the angle at which the toe kind of reaches black. And if we combine this with the toe length, which determines where the transition point between the linear section and the toe is. So if we turn this all the way down, you can see the linear section goes further down and only very down here is where the toe starts. And if we combine this toe length with the toe strength, we get a lot of control over exactly how we see into our shadows. And for example, in a shot like this, where you feel like I really love the overall contrast, but I'm just losing a little bit too much detail in the shadows. One thing you can try is, and this is generally a good idea if you want to like a more filmic cinematic look is to raise your black point ever so slightly. This slider is not very touchy, so don't be afraid to really kind of push this quite a bit to the right. And now you will find that these controls have much more effect. Generally, this is also true for the shoulder. If your black point is higher, the toe sliders will have more effect. If your white point is lower, then your shoulder sliders will have more effect. And we'll see that in a second. But here, for example, I kind of like that we see into the shadows a little bit more if I raise that black point. But I also don't want to overdo it with, you know, the toe strength all the way down because I feel like we just lose the crunchiness and the kind of, I don't know, the boldness of that look. So I want to dial in a little bit more toe, toe strength and maybe bring down that toe length. And right there, I think this is a really nice looking contrast curve. So let's have a look at these shoulder controls just to verify what I would have just said. If you're on an image like this and most of it really isn't that bright, then you will find that the shoulder controls don't have a massive effect. You can see it a little bit. Um, I don't know if this will survive YouTube compression, but if I turn down the white a little bit, and now I start moving this shoulder strength slider. You can see it really has an effect all the way to the left. We can see that 
our skin gets much softer and we lose a little bit of that sparkle. And if we turn it to the right, we get pingier highlights, we get more sparkle in the skin. It comes alive a little bit more, but at the expense of maybe losing more dynamic range or a more dynamic range is compressed in a smaller area up there in the curve, which might or might not be what we want. And this is just a trade-off that you have to make depending on what your project requires. And the last control here is a preserve saturation slider. Let's turn this to the left to see what it does. If we now increase contrast, you can see we increase saturation as well. And that's usually what happens if you increase contrast on all three channels. However, if we don't want that and we want to preserve our original saturation, we can basically apply this contrast only to the Y or the luminance channel, which is what we do if we turn this all the way to the right. And usually this 0.5 setting is a relatively natural looking position. But if we want more of a bleach bypass look, which by the way, for example, might really look really good on a shot like this, then we can turn it all the way to the right. And now perceptually, it looks like we're actually decreasing saturation when we're increasing contrast. Now I just want to take a second to talk about this transfer curve awareness and what that means. So if we dial in some contrast here, as I said, middle gray is automatically protected, given that you choose the right transfer curve here. This is supposed to correspond to whatever your timeline transfer curve is. In this case, this is DaVinci Intermediate. But if I say flip this node to ARRI log C3, now you can see the exposure shifts around and this is because now this tool expects DaVinci Intermediate, but it's receiving ARRI log C. But if we change this back to ARRI log C3, we get back to exactly where we started. So let's do this one more time and check that this is actually working correctly. Let's dial in some contrast and I'm gonna grab a still. Now I'll flip this to ARRI log C. And if I now wipe this still across, you can see that we get a difference because the tool is not getting what it's expecting. But if we now flip this to ARRI log C as well, you can see now you can wipe all the way you want and you get the same result. And this is because this tool is transfer curve aware in the supported transfer curves. So that's it for today. I hope you found this useful. If you want to read up on any of these functions again, you can also consult the manual, which is now available from my website, just like the tool is. And if you have any more questions, feel free to just contact me in your preferred method, and I'll be happy to answer your questions as best I can. Thank you so much for watching, and I will be back very, very soon.